to uh, begin our program, if we could just have everybody take their seats. My name is Jeff Hazard. I'm the Assistant Director of Athletics here and the Sports Information Director. And also, I have the pleasure to serve as the Hall of Fame Chair. And it's always a wonderful, wonderful day that we can get together and honor some of the greatest athletes who have ever donned a Red Dragon uniform. So obviously, this is another special day. Um, this, this is, earlier in the week, it looked like the weather wasn't going to be that great, but it never rains on homecoming Saturday. I'm nine for nine. so. Um, this is the only day of the year when the sun actually so, uh, shines on the stars that are here on the stage. So we certainly are, are, are looking forward to honoring them and, and listening to their accolades as we, as we say them. Uh, to begin today's program, we'd like to bring up the president of our college who has uh, been committed to making this college the best that it can be in a college of first choice. So it is my pleasure to introduce Dr. Donovan. Some people say I need to be committed. I want to welcome you to our annual Hall of Fame uh, induction. You know, when we started this ceremony about nine years ago, I don't think we had any idea of the dimensions and the depth of feeling that we would have over the years. And as you will see when you go outside, we've now inducted so many wonderful members that we have to start anew on another wall. And I'm thinking to myself, if this keeps up, we'll have to build another field house. This is a good occasion, I think, to, to think about what intercollegiate athletics means to this wonderful institution. And in talking with our coaches earlier this fall, I mentioned the concept of a holistic approach in working with our student athletes. That is in seeing the dimension of our student athletes beyond simply their athleticism. To begin with, our athletes are students first, and this is what I think is one of the real strengths of the Division III competition. Each year, dozens of our athletes distinguish themselves in the SUNYAC and even nationally in terms of academic honors. So we have both superb athletes and superb scholars. Secondly, our students are really ambassadors for the college in so many ways. They're ambassadors in their athletic performance. They're ambassadors in terms of the positive attention they bring to the college. And yes, they're ambassadors in terms of the many volunteer hours that they perform, which you may not hear much about, but we've had national awards each year for the kind of work they do in volunteerism. And finally, we want our students as athletes to develop themselves personally, intellectually, socially, and spiritually. And I can attest from close personal observation that being a top flight scholar athlete in all these dimensions produces just the kind of alumni of which we are so proud. It strikes me that if we're going to do anything, we should do it to the best of our ability. And I think this is precisely what we have done over the years with our intercollegiate athletic programs. Now this brings me to today's honorees. What they did here in their time here and what they're doing now really inspires all of us. Our inductees, each in her or his own way, represent exactly what makes our programs and our college great. And I would argue, as I mentioned last night, the great colleges tend to have great athletic programs. If this induction is like all the others that we've had from the beginning, you will sit here and you'll be emotionally moved by the excellence and the greatness that we honor. What a superb tradition this has become. So ladies and gentlemen, as we honor our great accomplishments at this wonderful college, we do so at a time when we can rest assured that our athletic programs are vital, they're successful, and they're an overall part, integrally, of the success of our college. Not only that, but today's athletes demonstrate so well some of our institutional core values, 
these values being continuous improvement, service to our community, and civility. And to our wonderful inductees, you can be as proud of us today as we are of you. Congratulations, and thanks for all that you've meant to Oneana. Thank you very much. Uh, just a couple of things before we start. We ask that if you have your cell phone on, if you could please put it on vibrate, or just because we like not to have ringing bells during our ceremony, so thank you. Uh, first group of people I'd like to thank uh, for their hard work during the year and each and every year that I've been chair and, and had the pleasure of serving on this committee when I first got here nine years ago uh, are, is the Hall of Fame Committee. Uh, there's certainly members uh, who have the goal in mind of, of putting in on that wall the best of the best. And uh, at this time, I'd like all those members of the Hall of Fame Committee, if you are present, to stand and, and please be recognized. Our Hall of Fame Committee members, if you are here. Uh, each year, it's, it's always great to see Hall of Famers who are already on the wall come back and, and help celebrate uh, more excellence. Uh, so at this time, I'd like to call out those members who are already in our Hall of Fame. If they could please be stand, uh, please stand, and uh, we'll, uh, if you could hold your applause till the end. Um, from the class of 1999, which was in our, our inaugural class, uh, Haruk Nato, class of 78, swimming and diving. Uh, uh, from the class of 2000, uh, Don Ball, coach, swimming and diving coach. Gar Stam, men's soccer coach. From the class of 2003, a men's basketball coach, Don Fuelling. The class of 2004, softball player, Michelle Small. From the class of 2005, uh, Ted Huntington, basketball and baseball. And from last year's class, uh, Kramer Harrington, basketball and baseball. And Ed Edward Leon, track and field. Thank you for coming back. Congratulations again. Uh, before we actually get into the formal part of, of calling up our Hall of Famers, uh, certainly this year is a little bit more special for myself because now we're actually inducting people that I know and that I've seen play. Uh, I've always had to talk about people that I only hear the stories about, so this is an extra special day for me as well. Uh, as we bring the, the inductees up uh, for those who I actually had a chance to uh, see perform. And, and the recurring theme is excellence and commitment to just doing their best and being more than they ever thought they could be. And the coaches who made them work for that goal of being the best uh, certainly uh, is, is a tremendous uh, thing for our college and we thank you as well for, for making those athletes the best they could be. Uh, so our first, uh, as we get started, um, Brian Dooley, men's lacrosse. Brian Dooley is the college's greatest men's lacrosse player to date as he enters the Hall of Fame. He garnered more honors in his four years than any lacrosse player that came before or since his graduation. As a four-year starting player, he led the program to its greatest heights, including the program's only appearance in the NCAA tournament in 1999. Oneana had four straight double-digit winning seasons while Dooley was a player, putting together a record of 44 wins and 19 losses during the years of 1997 to 2000. The program won back-to-back -back Empire Lacrosse League titles in 1998 and 1999 and won the program's only ECAC Upstate Tournament title in 2000 when Dooley was a senior. Brian was twice selected as an All-American, once as the Empire Lacrosse League Rookie of the Year and ELL Player of the Year. As a senior, he was an ECAC All-Star, was SUNYAC Player of the Year, and was selected as the MVP of both the ECAC Tournament and the USULA Senior All-Star Game. He still is the all-time leading scorer for the program with 276 career points. After graduating with a degree in education, he is currently teaching second grade in Rye, New York, where he is also the high school boys varsity lacrosse coach. 
And as our first uh, member, I had a chance to watch him for a year, and I can tell you, I sat with Dan Mahar last night, his coach, and he said, you got to see the best. And yes, I did get to see the best for one year. Please help me welcome Brian Dooley to our Athletic Hall of Fame. Thank you for the kind words, Jeff. Um, congratulations to my fellow inductees as well. It is an honor to stand here with you. Um, I'd like to start out by thanking SUNY Oneonta, the Hall of Fame Committee, the Athletic Department, my fiance Heather, my parents, brothers and family, Coach Jim Nagel, Coach John Klepacki, Coach Dan Mahar, and congratulations on your new appointment as head coach here, my teammates, friends, and Mr. Murph, my lacrosse grandfather. I'm truly honored and very proud to be, to be accepted into the Oneonta Athletic Hall of Fame. I remember speaking to Coach Nagel as a high school senior, the lacrosse coach here from 1994 to 2001, and we spoke about the opportunity of playing in Oneonta. As it turned out, I came to school here because it offered education and I wanted to play under Coach Nagel. Um, a special thank you to Coach Nagel for taking a chance on me. He instilled in me a sense of confidence, um, helped me set individual and team goals, and passed on a tremendous amount of knowledge to me. He's definitely one of the most influential people in my lacrosse career. To my teammates and coaches, each season we were given team t-shirts with our team motto or goal printed on them. My first season the t-shirt read 16 steps to respect. We achieved that goal of earning respect. In our eyes we earned it that first year, however it took three to four years to earn the respect we deserve in Division III. I'm proud to say that I was part of a family that put Oneonta lacrosse on the map. We earned a Division III national ranking of number 10 in just four years. None of this could have been achieved without the supporting guidance of Coach Nagel, Coach Dan Mahar, Coach John Klepacki, and most important, my teammates. We were a team comprised of many role players who contributed their role to better the team. Our team success was attributed to hard work, commitment, team camaraderie, sportsmanship, and our overall enjoyment. I will never forget that. To my off-the-field heroes, Heather, Mom, Dad, and my three brothers, thank you for your love and support. Overall, my experiences at Oneonta, playing the sport of lacrosse, and the guidance and support of my family have helped me shape me into a teacher, coach, and a committed athlete. I'm thankful for the lasting memories and friendships I have taken from Oneonta. Thank you once again. A little story about our next inductee. Um, I don't know how many of you remember, Michelle Dombrowski was our field hockey coach here for, for many years. And uh, she used to come by my office frequently just to say hi and, you know, what's going on, catch up. And uh, one day she came in the office, she was so excited. If you know Michelle, she gets very excited about things uh, all the time. And uh, she said, oh, I just got this transfer. And I was like, oh, okay, where is she from? I'm thinking this D1 kid is going to, you know, make our field hockey program incredible. So she's like, she's from New Paltz. And I was like, New Pulse, the team that we beat, and they're kind of in last place in the SUNYAC. I'm like, you know, and they had actually played at our place that year. And I said, OK, Michelle, I said, the only player on that team that I would even want to see wear a uniform for Oneonta is the one that was running past us the entire day, back and forth, making us look like we were standing still. And she says, well, that's the one. And so now I was excited. So um, certainly, as, you, as we read her accolades, you will understand why everyone was so excited to see um, this particular individual come to Oneonta because she certainly was a special individual. Adrian Musu Jackson Buckner accomplished much during her brief two-year tenure with the Oneonta State field hockey and track and field programs, but she did leave an indelible mark at the college that will endure forever. Her list of accolades are many and include an individual national championship, being an NCAA Woman of the Year finalist, and being one of only eight student athletes and the only Division III student athlete to receive an NCAA Top 8 award in 2007, which is the highest honor that can, be that can be bestowed on any student athlete by the NCAA. Her athletic accomplishments include being the 2006 NCAA Division III National Champion in the 200 meters. She was a six-time All-American in the sport of indoor and track, outdoor track, along with being a six-time ECAC champion. In both indoor and outdoor track, 
she captured a total of 17 SUNYAC titles, competing as an individual and as part of our relay squads. At the conclusion of the 2006 outdoor season, she was selected as the NCAA Atlantic Region Athlete of the Year. She also excelled in the classroom, where she earned honors for her academic prowess. She was a four-time National Field Hockey Coaches Association All-Academic Squad selection, while being on the SUNYAC All-Academic Team and Commissioner's List for four years. She received the Dr. Dolores Bogart Award from the SUNYAC, which is the highest honor a female student athlete can receive from the conference. She was honored as an academic All-American, was selected as an NYSWCAA Scholar Athlete, was the Track and Field Coaches Association Female Scholar Athlete of the Year in 2006, and she also received an NCAA Postgraduate Scholarship. She is currently pursuing a master's degree in higher education administration at Syracuse University. To the athlete we just simply call Moose, please welcome Adrian Musu Jackson Buckner. That was a really long list. <laughs> I didn't realize it was that long. Um, so I didn't think about the Hall of Fame at all, uh, especially not anytime soon. And I think the only time we ever spoke about it was Mike dropped me off at the train station at the end of Nationals in 2006 and said, yeah, I'll see you in 10 years, you know, uh, at the induction. And I'm thinking, yeah, you know, 10 years. So when I got an email saying, you know, we want you to come back and be in the Hall of Fame, I'm like, you're kidding, right? Um, so this is special, and thank you to everyone who helped make this possible. All my coaches and the administrators that are, you know, like my best friends now. <laughs> um, but, you know, my first track meet was only five years ago. Like, first track meet ever was only five years ago. Um, and it was really disastrous. Like, I didn't wear spikes, I wore sneakers, and my speed suit didn't fit. You know, I ran into the girl in the lane next to me. And, uh, you know, I, I look back at just two years ago, I was running in straight lines which was an accomplishment. I wore spikes every meet. Um, and I stopped thinking that it was okay just to finish the race. When I was a freshman at New Paltz, it was okay just to finish the race. And it was great that I hit the girl next to me and I got disqualified, but I'd finished a race, you know. And by the time I got to Oneonta uh, my junior year, it turned into, I didn't want to just finish the race, I wanted to win the race. And I didn't want to just win the race, I wanted to beat everybody else in every other heat. And then it turned into, well, I just want to beat everybody. So um, thank you to everybody at Oneonta because the environment I was at at New Paltz wasn't nurturing of who I think I've become now, and that's a champion, and that's somebody who wants to be good and do better and doesn't settle. Um, thank you, Mike, for always calling me a champion, even, even when I didn't feel like one. Thank you. I'm not supposed to cry. Um, and thank you, everybody, for encouraging me and thank you dad and Sako and my mother um, for reminding me that it's okay to do the things that make me happy. That's it, thank you. <laughs> Our next inductee, uh, who will be inducted posthumously, is Claire Jacobson Sr. Uh, he made his mark in the sports of basketball and baseball. In basketball, he played on the team all four years and was a member of the 1949-50 squad that completed a 19-1 season. During the 50-51 season, he played in eight games and averaged 17.6 points per game. He finished his career averaging 12.5 points and he, uh, with a career-high 33 points in a game against Harper College, which is now Binghamton University. As a member of the baseball team, he was 4-1 and one and hit 333 during his senior season to help the team finish 9-3 and three overall that year. Jacobson graduated with a bachelor's degree in education and spent 32 years in the New Berlin Central School teaching 6th grade and coaching at the high school. Jacobson is also responsible for developing a 40-acre lake in the town of Larns named Larchwood Lake, and he built the CJ Golf Course, which is now called Colonial Ridge from scratch. 
Accepting for his father today will be his wife, Lo uh, well, accepting for Claire today will be his wife, Lois, and his son, Claire Jacobson, Jr. So please help me welcome Claire Jacobson, Sr. to our Athletic Hall of Fame. This is my mother, uh, who my father met here at school. She's the class of 55. I also graduated from uh, SUCO, class of 78 and a half. Uh, <laughs> I'd like to start by thanking uh, Vince Fodi, who has worked hard getting some veterans in here. That they don't have real good records uh, from the days back then. And, you know, you look at the numbers, at least I do, and I say, oh, 12.5 a game. Well, big deal, what's with that? Well, back in those days, I think you got to remember, it was a little bit different, different game. Right? The two-handed set shot and the setup and all that. And when you look at it that way, it's, it's uh, you know, it doesn't quite seem so small. I know one thing about my father is that they say he was a great athlete and all that, but I think more than talent, he had a determination. He was a competitor, a fierce competitor in anything he did. And we are very grateful for this honor, our whole family. Uh, it's, it's, it's a wonderful thing. And I think it's going to be coolest for my son, Steve, who happens to be a junior here now, that he can you know, go to the Wall of Fame with his pals and say, hey, there's my grandpa. Thank you. Our next inductee uh, excelled in three sports here at Oneonta during his time. Uh, the sports of cross country, track and field, and swimming and diving after transferring here from Adirondack College. Uh, Jan Miller's greatest accomplishments as an athlete came as a diver for Oneonta State. After never ha uh, having dove prior to attending Oneonta, in two years he earned All-America honors when he placed ninth at the Small College Championships in 1972. That year he was also the New York State Diving Champion while setting a record with his score at that meet. Miller earned all state honors during both seasons as a diver for the Red Dragons. In cross country, Jan was a co-captain for the team during the 1971 season and helped lead the Red Dragons to a 10-4 record in dual meets. In track and field, he was a two-time all-state performer in the pole vault, setting a school record of 13 feet while placing fourth at the New York State meet in 1971. His postgraduate uh, Post-collegiate highlights include riding his bicycle across the United States, covering 2,800 miles in 28 days. He has sailed 3,000 miles across the North Atlantic Ocean in the winter on a boat that ended up finishing second in the uh, Whitbread Around the World race. He also climbed 90 peaks in 90 days in the Canadian Rockies and is only one of a few people in the world able to do 10 one-finger, one-arm pull-ups. So this gentleman is quite an athlete, and we certainly are very excited to welcome him to our Athletic Hall of Fame. hard time sleeping last night. Every time I started going to sleep, I kept dreaming I was a Midas muffler. And then when I got up this morning, I was exhausted. <laughs> when I was at my last reunion, I took a walk up on the baseball field at around 5.30 in the morning and stood behind home plate. And I never played baseball, but I had an epiphany in that I started thinking of a baseball player with a baseball bat hitting a ball. 
and thinking that at that moment in time, that athlete was trying his absolute best at that moment. And when you think about the athletics experience that we have in college, through four years, every day practicing, you're constantly achieving moments of trying your absolute best. When we're competing, you're trying your absolute best. When you're encouraging others on your team to do your absolute best. And those four years in college of going through that constant exercise every day really provided us with the, all of us, all the athletes here and all the others, you know, with the foundation and character that we take to our jobs and how we handle our family and friends and careers. And it is that foundation of that experience in college which has really had more to do than academics that I had in college. And uh, we have a lot to be thankful for with the university to providing us with the basis by which to do so. Do they still have cold, snowy winters here in Oneonta? <laughs> when, we used to, when we used to practice, I had a roommate named Keith Benjamin, who's also on the Hall of Fame. And he was a tremendous inspiration to me, and he got me starting to come up to dive at 5.30 in the morning. And we were doing you know, several workouts a day at the time. And the tribute here goes to the coaches, because both Corky Lynch and Don Ball here used to wake up and let us into the pool at 5.30 in the morning, even during the winter. And uh, their encouragement and their guidance and uh, their crack in the whip is, uh, allowed us to achieve what we did. I'm very thankful for that and thankful to the administration. And it's exciting to see what's going on with the college today. Thank you very much. Our next inductee, Kristen Marulo Shear, was a two sport standout in two years in soccer and basketball for Oneana after transferring to the college. In soccer, she helped lead the program to back to, uh, to, back, to back ECAC bursts, including playing in the championship game in 1989. During the 1989 season, she collected 17 goals and 36 points, which currently still stand as the third best and sixth best, respectively, all time for a single season. She was selected twice to the all-conference team and once to the all-state team during her two seasons in soccer. She still owns the career marks for goals per game and points per game, nearly two, and hold, while holding the single season record for goals per game, one, 1 1.0, which is pretty special, uh, which she accomplished during the 1989 season. In basketball, she was an all-conference performer during her only season with the program in 1989-90. During that season, she scored 43 points versus Binghamton, which still stands as the school record for women's basketball here. She also set at that time during that season the scoring mark of 447 points, which stood for nearly a decade until it was eclipsed. Currently, she, has been the, uh, she is the Director of Guidance at the Skaneva Central School since 1999 after receiving her Master's in Education from Oneonta in 1998. In 2004, she was inducted into the Section 4 Athletic Hall of Fame for her outstanding high school career. Please help me welcome Kristen Marulo Shear to our Athletic Hall of Fame. Jen just gave me some words of wisdom that totally threw me off. So, um, I'm humbled and truly moved to be here today. I'd like to thank the Hall of Fame Committee. Don't cry, I'm crying already. The Hall of Fame Committee for this honor and the Alumni Board for making this day so incredibly special. To my family, my mom, you're still my hero. My family, my husband, for all of his support, my sons Connor and Kyle, for sharing the same passion in sport that I do, and for still allowing me to beat you in the backyard when we play. 
to my sister Trace and my brother-in-law Dave. No words can describe the gifts that you give me every day. <laughs> and thank you for continuing to let me be a part of this women's soccer program. As I look around, all of you, I'm deeply touched by the support of my friends, my very special friends, Wow. Um, in pre preparing today, I couldn't help but to reflect on the profound impact that sport has had on my life, the relationships that I've built, the lessons that I've learned, and to those people who gave me the opportunity to play. You are in my thoughts today. My friends, the common goal that ties us together is sport. This great institution and this amazing national championship team. We share many memories through our families, painting the wall, traveling to games, making a list of approved sideline comments. <laughs> many of them were approved just because sir or ma'am was at the end of it. <laughs> Sport has taught me many lessons, lessons about the lessons about compassion and commitment and hard work and overcoming adversity have contributed to the leader that I am today. Being a dual sport student athlete with a full-time job makes the challenges of being a wife, a mother, a student again, school counselor, a soccer coach, a PTO member, and one of the many Oneonta State faithful fans seem manageable. <laughs> In closing, I know that none of this would have been possible without the strong women who came before me. Their dedication paved the way for me, and in some small way, I hope that I've helped to pave the way for those women who come after me. Thank you. Ronnie Sanchez. <laughs> yep, there I, was. <laughs> I don't have to do any more, right? Just bring him up. Um, certainly, again, another outstanding athlete here that you know I only hear the stories about, but certainly a pretty special gentleman. Uh, Ronnie was his top basketball player during his four years at Oneonta while help, helping lead the program back to prominence in the SUNYAC and in the New York region. He was twice selected as, the conference, as an all-conference player and was a SUNYAC Player of the Year at the conclusion of the 1995-96 season. As a senior, he scored 621 points while leading the Red Dragons to the ECAC Upstate New York Basketball Championship. For his performance during the tournament, he was selected as the most valuable player. For his career, Ronnie scored 1,264 points grabbed 518 rebounds, dished out 126 assists, and had 117 steals. He played every aspect of the game. Since his graduation, he has continued his passion for the sport of basketball, currently serving as an assistant coach at Division I Washington State University. Please help me welcome Ronnie Sanchez to the Athletic Hall of Fame. First and foremost, thank you very much for having me. I wanted to uh, congratulate all the other inductees um, and thank the Hall of Fame committee, the athletic department, and uh, Diane Davison for uh, following up with me and uh, make sure that I got here. Um, I, I am so honored and extremely humbled to be here, to think that my contributions to this university warrant this kind of recognition is breathtaking. Um, but that being said, th this really isn't about me. I have had so many people here help me uh, throughout my time, and if I name all of them, I probably will name the entire Oneana community, plus uh, the administrators, the people in financial aid, uh, 
I mean, everyone here really embraced me once I arrived. So I can't name them all, but I do have to thank uh, Joanne Barnhart. She was uh, actually, she, I think she worked in the financial aid office, but she was always just there to take me out of my problems. I uh, never had enough money. I uh, didn't have a place to live. I uh, didn't have a meal cart to eat. And she just completely uh, went out of her way to make my first day here probably the most memorable time that I've ever had. I can't remember a single basketball game. I can't remember how many points were scored uh, or things like that. But I do remember the people here that, uh, that really made me feel welcome and became an extended family. I have to thank Joanne Fisher, uh, Coach Lee Fisher's wife, and Mr. and Mrs. Mike Spisto. They uh, became kind of my, sur my surrogate parents as I arrived here. And, um, you know, with them behind me, I was able to accomplish things that I, I really never thought uh, possible. My parents never really had the opportunity to come up. Um, they were always working in New York City, but uh, with them, you know, just bringing cookies and bringing food up uh, really uh, made my time here that much more enjoyable. Uh, but the people that I really have to thank, and, and, and their, their names should be on my plaque, are my teammates. Um, to name a few, uh, Mike Spisto, DJ Allen, uh, Nigel Husey, James Myers, Jesse Daniels, uh, Chris Felton, and Tyrone Lohr. Without those guys by my side running the floor, um, I don't think we would have been able to accomplish anything at all. Um, it, without them, I know that uh, we would not have been able to accomplish much. So th th this is not, again, about me. Uh, and lastly, uh, Jerry Moravito and Lee Fisher. Thank you for two things. Thank you for, number one, giving me an opportunity to, to become an athlete at the collegiate level. And secondly, thank you for believing in me. Because of you, I have excelled in ways that I never thought possible. Coach Fisher's mentoring is something that still today I, um, I'm, I'm able to enjoy. His, uh, He's an exemplary man, and uh, if I can someday be anywhere near the caliber of person that he is, then um, I would consider myself to have been a successful human being. So I thank you all, um, and I appreciate this so very much. Uh, before I introduce uh, Tracy Ranieri, coach of our national championship team, I just would like to um, just share some vivid memories of that season, and especially that weekend uh, that was so exciting. Um, we are definitely going to be the last school that will host and win the national championship, so that's, we know that's in the books. Um, and obviously there were so many people that helped that week. I mean, we found out on Sunday night that we're hosting this national championship weekend, and okay, now what are we doing? Uh, and so I certainly want to thank all those parents and friends and community members and administrators who certainly stepped up and, and helped us during that week to, to put on a first class show. And it was a show. Um, my most vivid memory actually, I mean obviously it's the national championship game. I mean it's closing minutes of the game and everybody's scrambling and what's going on we're down one nothing and Chicago's kind of starting to get ready for their little ceremony and they're you know thinking that they're going to win the game and in the press box they're starting to mull around and fill out the award ceremony uh, speech and how it's going to go and all of a sudden there's a foul called and now what's going on and everybody's looking up and Rose Vallon starts to charge towards the ball and puts it down and we're off. She puts the ball in front of the goal, and who's there but Brooke Davis, who scored, I think, every important goal during that, that time to get us in the game or tie a game or win a game during that stretch, it seemed. And, and the game was one-to-one. -one. Now the NCAA rep is all upset because she's like, oh, we got to change, we got to wait, and all that. So, and I'm just sitting there like, hey, the game ain't over. You didn't know that we were only on, and it wasn't over. So, uh, so don't blame me. Uh, and obviously, in overtime, it was like a magical goal. You could just see it. It just floated in slow motion into that upper corner. And, and to just watch it and, and the excitement and all the stuff that happened after that was certainly something that I will never, ever, ever, ever forget. So that was certainly an exciting moment. 
and thank you for that. Okay, I could go my whole entire life now without probably ever, <laughs> I hope not, but if that's it, what a memory, okay? Uh, so at this time, I'm gonna turn it over to our athletic director currently and the coach of that fantastic team, Tracy Ranieri. On behalf of the 2003 team, I want to congratulate all the inductees. And I know you're about ready to pop because this, this class of inductees, I'm so proud that we are a part of it. There are so many winners up here and how humble they are and how gracious they are. And we all have had the same experience with the fact that Oneonta, the faculty, the staff, the community of Oneonta has embraced our student athletes and really gave them an environment where they could thrive. And so I really proud to be a part of this class on behalf of the 2003 team. Thank you and congratulations to the other inductees. Many things have to come together to win a national championship. And I want you to know that every day, every team here is trying to do that. But everything has to come together perfectly for that to happen. It started many years before this, particularly with our senior class. Many, many years before, every one of these athletes that are on the stage today has been playing soccer since they were very small. So lots of tournaments and lots of road trips by our family. Thank you so much for letting them live that dream since they were young. It started with them training on their own, dripping sweat when no one else was watching. It started with a commitment and a work ethic that created a competitive cauldron in the practice environment every day that made us ready, more than ready for game day. This team was incredibly selfless in their pursuit of our team goals. And I think that's what sets them apart. They were nurtured in this season by family, by friends, and by the campus community. You traveled to hundreds of thousands, uh, you traveled hundreds of thousands of miles to get to a game. And I know there are extraordinary stories out there right now about how you made it to games. Which brings me to Thanksgiving weekend, which truly Thanksgiving will never be the same for any of us. Um, it started on Thanksgiving Day when we had practice because we had the semifinal the next day. And after practice, we were getting ready to try to make Thanksgiving special because it was going to be different. No one was going to be with their family this Thanksgiving. David and I walked into our home, back door open, and found an entire Thanksgiving meal prepared by staff and faculty and community members. And you, you just can't imagine for, to allow, to give up some of your Thanksgiving to make these young women feel a part of the community at Oneonta made the difference because they were sad. They wanted to be with their families and you allowed them to be part of this family and it really, really made the difference, didn't it? Didn't it, guys? So thank you. We are never, ever going to forget what everyone else has done. And so we share, and certainly I've said it a hundred times, we share this championship with the college in every single way and with the families and the communities, you made such a difference. It culminated with a deep spirit and passion for being a Red Dragon. We love our Red Dragons. We are so proud of Oneonta. And it was the pride, pride, that was not gonna let us be defeated in that game. Everybody who knows soccer knows that if it's one nothing and there's a minute left in the game, you probably aren't gonna win that game. 
but it really was this deep-rooted passion for the college and for being a, a member of an Oneonta team because the traditions at Oneonta run deep in excellence and we really wanted to stand for that and we didn't want to let you down. So when the college was traditionally closed during the Thanksgiving holiday and there were more than a thousand people in the stands giving up their own Thanksgiving to watch us play, the lesson that we learned, the life lesson, was certainly never give up, never give up. And to look at the alumni behind me who have not only thrived in the Oneonta environment, but are giving back so impactfully in their own communities. The game's not over till it's over, and 29 seconds is plenty of time to get yourself there. And so, on behalf of the team, we're so, so honored to be inducted into the Hall of Fame. I want to just have a sidebar and say most of you know that Dr. Donovan has recently announced his retirement from the college and that is deeply emotional for all of us because it was his vision and his commitment and his resources to athletics and firmly believing that we can change lives by being student athletes and all he has given us. I really want to thank him personally and profoundly. Thank you so much. We're going to miss you. I can't help but thank Jeff and Tom. Tom got up with us. Tom Benoit, our head athletic trainer at the time, got up with us on Wednesday mornings at 7 o'clock. And we knew nobody else in the country was training at 7 o'clock in the morning on Wednesdays every single week of the season. Thank you, Tom, for giving up that time and making us really fit. We really appreciate it. Andy's in the audience. Andy, thank you for keeping us healthy on the field. And Jeff, most definitely a huge part of our team by keeping us straight and getting that game started and making sure our stats were right. And then lastly, on a personal note, my husband David is the most awesome man in the entire world. He is the link <laughs> to our team. He is an, a proud alumni of 1982 and we thrive in pride. Um, as, as, as alumni of the college. So David, thank you for being a great coach and being a great husband. And I'm very, very proud now to introduce the leadership, the captainship of our team, Sonata Wianovich bailey and, and Kelly Stevens. Thank you. First of all, this is a great honor that every single one of us deeply appreciates. On behalf of the team, we'd like to thank the community for its unending support, as Tracy had mentioned. We had children from the town making signs for our game. We had restaurants opening and hosting us for breakfast. People sent us hand warmers, which would be useful today, too. <laughs> um, extensive coverage of the papers who followed us along our journeys. For people coming, thousands of people coming, well not thousands, but a lot of people coming to our <laughs> games. <laughs> thank you for making this a unique and memorable experience. We'd like to thank the faculty and staff for understanding our dream and being there along the way with us. Especially Dr. Donovan, Steve Perry, who hosted us for dinner one night even, Bart Ingersoll, who ha gave us inspirational speeches before our game, and the athletic staff who spent countless hours fixing us up and sending us along our way. We are greatly thankful for the facilities. This great new soccer field that we have behind us was part of the reason why we were able to host the finals that cold November. That field commands greatness and pride every time we step onto it, which contributed to our success. We are extremely honored to be up here amongst great student athletes. It, it's just an incredible feeling. Um, and to think about Chris here, who is inducted, and Tracy Ranieri. These are the women that we're looking forward to becoming. These, they're our inspiration. Um, so I, I dream of the day, so thank you. Um, on a lighter note, <laughs> the road to a national championship starts here, they said. As our cleats grip the earth of the 120-yard field, 
where the sweat dripped off our faces and landed on the crisp, crisp cut fields as our knees wobbled and our legs shook for yet another sprint after double sessions on a 96 degree August September uh, su summer day. Girls, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> It was a sprint that strengthened our bodies, our minds, our hearts to persevere together. This quote was said by Dave and Tracy Ranieri, which motivated the team, not individually, but as a whole. These words of wisdom echo through our minds. They are instilled in our everyday lives. Dave and Tracy have shown us women, the community, the faculty, and the staff what dedication, determination, and perseverance really mean. They have encompassed this within every single one of us because of their love and desire, not only for the game, but for the program that started many, many years ago. The national championship was one of the glorious moments, but we'd like to recognize the amazing women before us that built the program. The woman that played on the first Oneana State soccer team, the women who dedicated themselves to greater things, winning league and conference games, starting the streak, SUNYACs, ECACs, NCAA bids. The dream of a national championship started many years ago. It is the women before us that have allowed us to dream and dream to make it achievable. And it's, this is what the present Lady Dragons determine to continue this legacy. These remarkable women, combined with supportive family, faculty, incredible staff and community members, and two coaches that quickly became second parents. You all, are the, you all are the foundation of this program. You have given us the ability to embrace this and many other experiences to make us who we are, competitors, overachievers, and dreamers with ambition, desire, and determination to reach all our goals. Brianna Scurry, for those of you who don't know, a U.S. Women National Soccer goalkeeper and repeated gold medalist, said, you can't step out onto the field and expect anyone to roll over because of what you did before in the past year. You need to stay on the edge of your game. You need to leave them in the dust and leave no question of who is best. That's what a champion is. That person who perseveres and doesn't get satisfied with what they have done in the past. And it is at this time I would like to introduce to you, we would like to introduce to you, the women who continue to strive and persevere because of each and every one of you. It is your love and support that lives within us. We carried it off the fields, out of the classroom, and into our lives. We live it every day. You ready, girl? Yeah. First, I'd like to introduce and recognize Holly Bisbee. <laughs> Alyssa Cars. Rose Vaughn. Amanda Lapola. Brooke Davis. Cassie Perino. Laura Marcone. <laughs> Brittany Gates. <laughs> Liz Femia. <laughs> Megan Putnam. Colleen Wilbert. <laughs> Alexandra De Sosa. <laughs> Christina Gaspar. <laughs> Leslie Small. Jamie Liebring. Sorry. 
Trish D. Michelle. Corinne TC. Trisha Jager. Sarah Tauber. Candace Grosser. Jeff Hazard. Andy Spence. And last but not least, David and Tracy Ranieri. <laughs> and an extra special Tom Benoit. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, I'm a Hall of Famer. Uh, thank you. Uh, at this time, uh, certainly we have concluded our, our program. And uh, again, uh, we'd like to uh, just close with a, uh, a special poem, a tradition that was started by uh, Don Fowelling, who I inherited the chair of this committee, this wonderful committee, a few years ago. Uh, and this year, I'd like to uh, take a stab at reading it, if that's OK, Don. Thank you. Um, and it certainly is a wonderful way to end this, this day. It seems it's been forever since the first time that we met. We shared some days together that we just cannot forget. There was work and there was laughter. There were tears and triumphs too. Successes and disasters, but somehow we came through. Yes, we worked to make things last, and yes, we had to strive. But God, our blood ran hot and fast and God, we felt alive. It's those moments where we lie on, they bespeak the way we feel. For we started out as iron, but we ended up as steel. And now in days that yet will dawn, although we'll be apart, those memories we know will spawn a smile in our hearts. Now take our wishes with you for blessings from above, for happiness in all you do, but most of all, our love. At this time, uh, we're going to give all the Hall of Famers their certificates, and then we'd like to have everyone join us as they go and look at their plaques on our wall as permanent members of our Athletic Hall of Fame. Thank you very much for coming today, and enjoy the rest of your day.